uh, Milo Yannopoulos, here supporting an organ that used to be uh, Identity Europa. It has been reformed by, from my understanding, by the same people, uh, yeah. probably as part of a, re, uh, a, a cleaning of their optics, I guess. And it, it's fascinating to see that personalities like Milo Yannopoulos w w now promote American identity movement while denunciating the alt-right. Right. It, it's, um, I guess, terrifying if you were a, a member of that organization. Um, I, again, at, at, at this point, I, I find it rather amusing. Um, the the IE has actually had, I think, three manifestations. Um, the first one arose, um, the, I believe it was called the American Youth Front or Nationalist Youth Front, something of that nature. And it was started by uh, Nathan Damago. And um, actually, er Eric Stryker told me a couple months ago that he, he had a hand in it or something like that. I, I don't I can't verify that, but um, I, I don't think you'd lie either. Um, but I, I don't know the degree to which um, he did uh, the degree to which he was an essential part of that. Uh, but yeah, it was it was that kind of thing. It certainly wasn't a skinhead group, but it was, you know, uh, harder edged, clearly, you know, white nationalist, uh, tough guy aesthetic, etc. Um, this started to change in 2015 and 2016. I actually met Nathan uh, Damago. He was, you know, brought to me by um, a couple of, you know, Evan Thomas and Sam Dixon. Like, oh, you've got to meet this guy. Blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, uh, Nathan uh, kind of is what he is. Uh, I definitely didn't dislike Nathan. I was never really uh, deep friends with him. Um, and, uh, but I was kind of telling him that, you know, it would be more interesting to kind of go into more identitarian route and certainly an alt-right at route. They adopted that. Um, and uh, then Nathan started to kind of take on a life of his own uh, in, in, in 2016. I did one, I think one of their first public actions where we went to Cal Berkeley in the summer of 2016 and we did a uh, safe space uh, event where we went to the center of Berkeley. We just spoke with people and we recorded it. And I think some, we were actually a little bit afraid that no one would show up, but uh, that we shouldn't have been. Uh, we had lots of interesting discussions, um, newspaper articles, got the word out. It, it was very fun. Uh, and it was it was at a point before Antifa had mobilized to such an extent that that kind of thing would be impossible. So that was in the summer of 2016. Um, and then again, Nathan took on a lot, uh, he was getting new recruits. It, he, he became a personality all to himself. Um, particularly with the, the punch of moldy locks and all that. I mean, this is, God, it's not that long ago, but it, it feels like ancient history, but, um, you know, the punch of moldy locks, all this kind of stuff. Um, and then post Charlottesville, there was this Nathan, was getting, uh, I don't know, I, I guess depressed or or just unsure of himself. Um, he actually was alongside me when we did a Charlottesville press conference uh, immediately afterward. But um, he kind of left and became just a kind of different guy. Uh, Patrick Casey came, came, took over, and um, I never knew that he hated me this much. I never thought much about him at all, but he, uh, you know, wanted to just, totally purge me from any of the movement. If you so much as talked with me, you'd be expelled. Uh, then when I was doing the college tour and IE members were helping me, he was expelling them. For, it, it was just uh, pretty shocking and um, just kind of like, you know, why? And it was this like, we're identitarians. We, we've had nothing to do with the alt-right or Richard Spencer. Oh, that, that's all terrible. We're, we have this different view. And I'm just like, rolling my eyes um <laughs> then in 2018 um we have yet another reincarnation and it's kind of yeah i think it was came out of the 2018 kind of ricky vaughn american nationalism stuff where it's we're american nationalists and so we're the american uh identity movement so they kind of married those two things um and i don't they just did a bunch of hanging up flyers or taking pictures of themselves hanging up flyers and advertising their group and I, it's just, I don't, I just found it excessively boring and, and pretty fake. And, uh, then now it's the Groypers and Nick Fuentes. And, uh, I actually probably would imagine that they're going to be at each other's throats within six to nine months. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It, it's just not 
serious. And I, I, I you know, in 2011, um, it was it was shortly after I, I took over um, MPI, and uh, Jared Taylor had a a conference that he he had that was getting banned. He actually got banned two years in a row. I think 2010 and 2011. And um, Taylor at, in American Renaissance was always able to use private venues. And just because we weren't in this hyper polarized, um, you know, environment that we are now, it, there there was no problem. You know, I'm I'm sure there was a newspaper write up, but basically nothing much happened. And um, as as 2010 was rolling around, that changed, and he was getting canceled over and over. In 2011, in September, I held the MPI conference um, that, and, and Jared Taylor actually spoke at that. I invited him to speak, and um, we we cracked this code and we did it at the Ronald Reagan Building, which was wildly expensive, impossible to make a profit, but definitely safe and 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 also very nice. It was in D.C. We had good, great food, etc. <clears throat> um, I did uh, a number of conferences there. I mean, 2016 was only the the culmination of one of them, and they kept having more and more people. And we had great people. I mean, Alain de Benoit spoke at MPI conference. Guillaume Fay, um, Piero San Giorgio, um, uh, myself, Taylor, uh, Roman Bernard. I mean, we we just had cool people. We, we had a kind of European vibe in the sense that we would um, sometimes have mostly European speakers. It, it was very interesting. Kevin McDonald, 2015 to 2016, Kevin McDonald uh, was the keynote uh, speaker. So it, it was uh, it was a great thing. Um, I can't do that anymore because of my notoriety and the, the Ronald Reagan building will just drag their feet, play dirty tricks and just kind of screw me over. And we're, we're at a point where the intensity is so high there are going to be fights. They're going to, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. And um, so it's like we we have all these people who are, who are just reinventing the wheel, but reinventing it in this just puny, shitty manner. And it, it's just kind of like, all right, so you have a groiper event with a bunch of groipers talk. You know, it's like. <sighs> The, the the movement was so divisive and so toxic and um and and i i don't think i'm being self-serving or or whatever just saying it was so much of it was directed at me and it was like the okay guys so you claim that i am too notorious but you are gonna fit in with mainstream conservatives or you know appeal to the masses or you won't have these problems you have all of these same problems there is no differentiation made by the mainstream media they just they see through your act um etc et and what you do at the end of this long road is reinvent the wheel but not even reinvent it you just create again this just shoddy crap version of what i and others did and I, I just, I don't know. I, I mean, at some level, I'm going to come back in this movement. You know, I, I, I've focused on personal stuff for a while. Um, but I just, when I, when I look at where it's headed, I just think, you know, what kind of serious, idealistic, genuine person would want to be a part of this? Um, it's just, the movement itself depresses me. Um, I, you know, again, I, I don't want to, I don't want all this to sound, I don't want all this to be about drama and I don't want all this to be sound, you know, again, depressing and black pitting, uh, but I just, I just have to be truthful. Um, we haven't gone forward. Um, we, you know, all of these promises made by the American nationalist faction, uh, are, are, were, are obviously false and we're now at just a kind of crappy place that um, the, the type of people we want to reach would not really want to have a part, would not want to be a part of this. And I, I find that sad. I, I just think there, there just needs, we need to take a step back and there needs to be a reboot.